Well, how y'all doing? This is Chicken Johnny, and you're out in the shop with Chicken Johnny. Now today, as promised, we're going to build a vacuum seeder. So I'm not going to tell you right now what a vacuum seeder is. I'm just going to tell you that it'll cut seeding time in half during my uh, seedling propagation time. So as I begin to get ready for spring, and I'm going to start planting 50 cell trays, I can use the vacuum seeder to really speed up my efforts. So we're out in the shop, we're going to use the table saw primarily, and we'll use some clamps and some screws and we'll do some other things. But what do you need for a vacuum seeder? You need a vacuum, you need a little bit of three-quarter inch plywood, and you need two pieces of clear plastic. So here we go. I'm going to start with a piece of plastic that's approximately five-eighths of an inch larger than the outside dimensions of this tray. Now, I want it to be a little bit larger so that I can move the vacuum seeder over the top but also this plastic is going to sit inside of a plywood uh, groove that I'm going to cut in my plywood. I'm going to take my piece of plywood that I have, this is a scrap piece, I'm going to cut it into four and five eighths strips the vacuum nozzle on my vacuum is two inches, so I need to be able to drill a hole into one of these strips of plywood. I'm going to start by cutting my piece of plywood into strips four and five eighths inches wide. I'm not going to cut these to length yet because the first thing I want to do before I cut them for length is to cut a rabbit and a dado. The dado is going to be exactly the width of this piece of plastic so that it will fit snugly inside that, that dado joint. The rabbit will be the same thickness so I can take another piece of plastic and set it in the back. Now the reason you want to have clear plastic is so that when you set the vacuum seeder on top of the tray you can look down to make sure that it's sitting firmly on the tray and then after you shut the vacuum off you can make sure that all of the seeds have dropped out. You're going to have to tap it a little bit because static electricity will hold some of those seeds in place. So to cut the rabbit I'm going to set my saw blade at exactly a quarter of an inch off the base of the of the saw and then I'm going to move my rip fence in a little bit at a time. Now I want my dado to start uh, I think I'll go in three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to use the edge of my plywood to set up an approximate distance of three quarters. This will allow for enough material so that the plywood won't break out at that edge and 
uh, a little bit of strength to hold the, the plastic in place. But it's also going to give me um, a uniform starting place. We don't really care how far it goes, but it needs to be uniform. And it'll come down, because it's got a three quarter of an inch, it'll come down on the side of these trays, self centering on the trays, or at least that's what we're hoping for. I intentionally made that a loose fitting joint primarily because I'm using an older piece of plastic and it's got a bit of a bend to it but I also wanted to make it a loose fitting joint because <clears throat> I'm going to put silicone down into that joint all the way around and I want the silicone to not just be on the outside, I want it to actually be in the joint. So now I'm just putting these two together, the two side pieces, and now I can measure what I'm going to cut my end pieces. And so my end pieces are going to be cut at 11 and an eighth inches long. The best way to make that cut is on the chop saw. actually make this out of this one piece and that's what I'm going to do. We're going to check up the fit and that will give us the height on our style sides. I'm going to cut slightly strong of my line, about a 32nd of an inch. In other words, I'm just going to leave my line. That way, I know it's going to fit tight without being too short.
So I've sanded these pieces off so that I don't have slivers that I have to deal with later. Mostly I just wanted to get the edges that I wasn't going to be able to sand later. So let's go over to the glue up table and see what we have to do next. Now there's several ways that we could joint these together. We just have to make sure that they're in the right order and precise. If you're doing this at home you could nail it together with a few finishing nails or maybe even a couple of four penny or six penny nails. I'm going to use my Craig jig and I'm going to drill pockets to screw these sides in with. It's a lot easier if you have the tools for it. So I'm going to put three screws on each side. See these pockets that I've drilled will allow me to run a screw this way into the sideboard. These screws are special screws for holding into plywood as well. But the nice part is that my screw is going to go across the grain. So before I came in from the shop, I finished the vacuum seeder and one of the things that I did off camera is I attached the back plastic plate. Now this has got to be clear so that you can see through, so that you see that the seeds have all come through. And then I drilled a hole that would receive the hose off of my vacuum. So now I filled a tray with soil and I've pressed it down using my additional extra seed tray. And now, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I've got some pelleted onion seeds and I'm going to place my vacuum seeder here. attach the vacuum hose and then I'm going to pour the pelleted seeds out on the frame. Now I'll turn the vacuum on.
Now looking down, I can see that all of my seats have fallen through. This one drill hole, so I'm going to plant that one by hand. Now some of these seeds, because I didn't use the dibbler, have run over to the sides, but I'm pretty happy with this as a first as a first run. I know a few things that I have to do, a few changes that I have to make, and uh, I'll make those changes carefully set this in set the cover now I'm just going to press this down slightly because I want good ground contact between the seeds and the soil And that's the vacuum seeder. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make and use the vacuum seeder. If this all edits out right, I should have it up and running for you soon. Please hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment. Tell me if you think a vacuum seeder would help you out. And if you're not a subscriber and you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. We sure do appreciate it, and it helps us out a lot. Thanks for watching. I'm Chicken Johnny and Mitzer Shem. I'll see you again. Eat your vegetables.